morning, mate, and welcome to Friday Facts number 396. Sound improvements in 2.0. How are you doing, uh, my good friend? Mm, soundy mojo. Mo mojo of sound. Sound of mojo. I don't know. Let's go with it. <laughs> High quality. Hello. High quality Hello. sounding mojo. Yes, let's go with that. Uh, today we're looking at fidelity. I, uh, no, 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 I don't record. I don't record your audio in high, high fidelity, sir. Sorry, sorry. But looking at and listening to uh, the many sound improvements we've got, we've been working on for 2.0. Now, Mojo, let's first off talk about the existing sound in Factorio, because Factorio, yes. let's be honest, it's 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 dated. It's it's a number of years it's old been. now. Um, it it's has been sound. There, but... It has music. It has sound, yes. It has, it has a good music. soundtrack that, that's worked well and stand the test of time. It's, bit, it's above average for, for most games. The sound stage is pretty good. Ah, uh, you say? Okay. I disagree. I disagree. I, I think the sound is a bit dated. It's it's a bit... It's definitely showing its age, though. Yeah, okay. I've been listening to it for however many years now. It's not only that. It's, it's, it's other games have done sound so much better to give you the feel of the game. And I think Factorio is... Is lacking in that improvement. That that is a somewhat recent issue improvement. Something that's only come up in really the last three, four, five years. That sound improvement has just taken a leap in in quality. That yeah, might not true. have been there in previously, but yes. Um, sound tends to be neglected. Um, it does in games in general. It does. It does. So uh, we have working sound accents. So. A sound any makes when it's active is usually a single looping main sound, hence why it's a little bit dated. Some enemies might have sounds that play when they become active or when they stop working or go idle. A good example would be the car. If you put fuel in it, it starts making sound. If you jump in it, it starts making more sound. You get out of it, just less sound. Take the fuel out, even less sound. Yep. Yeah. Uh, there are several properties and modifiers can be used to control working sounds a little bit more, but there's only so much so much one can do creatively with a single looping sound when it needs to work in all situations. The ability to synchronize the sounds of a machine to its animation was high on the list of requested audio features. When I came up with the concept of sound accents, shorter sounds which would get played at specific frame of a specific animation. Initially, I expected the machine would get one or two of these sound accents to complement its main sound, and that would be it. But Ian, on the other hand, Ian had other ideas. Starting with the foundry, beside the main sound, there would be 12 sound accents used to emphasize individual components and sections of the animation. And he didn't stop here. We, there are now machines with even more complex sound sets. We might show them at some later date, but let's get back to the foundry. So. I'm going to, in post, I'm going to boost all these audio tracks because... They're a little subtle, as being Factorio is. Yeah, and I, I think to really get them, some of them definitely need to be boosted. There's one further on that I've listened to five times, and I, I want to listen to it boosted as well. Um, but we have the normal foundry. Which I'm going to interrupt. It sounds really good. It sounds really accurate. You can hear different parts of the machine making different sounds, and it, it all makes sense. And then yeah. on the right-hand side, we have the same sound loop, but we have the bigger box representing the main sound loop, and the smaller one represents some of these accent sounds. So... You can definitely hear when some things kick into action and other things don't. Uh, but then Factorio has the Factorio problem, which is, well, when you add speed modules to speed something up or productivity modules to slow something down, or technically if you're in a low power state, buildings go faster. Um, so they have the foundry with the sped up on the left and speeding up sounds is something you can do as somebody who works in video editing and, and all that sort of stuff, speeding up is something you do pretty easy. Slowing down is um, uh, difficult. Yes. It only works to a, uh, an ex a certain extent before it starts to sound like chipmunks. And... Well, speeding up, so the speeding up sounds, sounds fine, okay? Um, you can physically hear that the machine is running fast without even looking at the machine. But the slowing down, because they've used accents, there are only sounds that click kick in at certain frames of the machine, and they have been lengthened slightly, but they've also been pitch shifted so they don't end up at too low a pitch. 
it's okay-ish. But if you had a, a a foundry that has what three prob mods in it, or three modules, four modules, three I think it is, and you put all prods mods in it, slowing it right the way down, and had a lower power state, it was running at like less than fifty percent of the speed. The sounds profile wouldn't work It'd anymore. Be terrible. Yeah. Yeah, the pouring of liquid metal. It doesn't work. Yeah. Um, and as an animation, that's fine. You can just accept that it pulls slower and it's part of the animation and just disbelief will let you get there. But the audio, the audio is what makes or makes or breaks some games. Um, games have put a lot of effort into it. Like Satisfactory is one I come back to every time because the... They put a lot of effort in. They put a lot of effort in. The, the, they, they've got one sound dev on there. I think Joel is his name. Oh, sorry, Yol. Uh, uh, and, and wonders, wonders in the satisfactory for sound. But there are many games that just it fail because they just don't bother. Yeah. Yeah, they, they don't bother or they don't really <laughs> understand it. Actually, as a side note, one of the other, some other games that I particularly know for good sound design is um, the Batman Arkham series. They're really oh, good. Okay, yeah, I believe that. I believe that. It's, it's, it's a game that would benefit from good sound rather than... Uh, and, Funnily enough, cheap horror games tend to have decent sound in them. Oh, yes. Um, because they don't spend the money on graphics or anything else, but they'll spend money on sound because the sound paints more of the game than anything else. Um, so, yes, uh, they also have multiple main working sounds. So now we have multiple sounds for one machine that can form sound accents. We could do something interesting by having multiple sounds, multiple main sounds as well. As it turns out, yes. We combine it with some other tricks of ours, mainly active machining, the ability to match the sound's volume or playback speed to the machine's activity rate. Activity rate is the machine reports how fast it is doing what it's doing. Could be as simple as reporting 1.0 when it's working uh, and 0. 0, 0.0 otherwise it could be a vehicle speed or something a little bit more creative let's look at a look at a couple of examples of vehicles see what we can do in 2.0 in 1.1 a car has one main body sound that plays faster as the car goes faster this is serviceable but we could do better let's use two sounds an idling sound and driving sound as the car speed increases the idling sound volume quickly decreases until it's completely silent. At the same time, the driving sound volume increases from silent to its maximum volume. At some point, the driving sound pitch starts to increase as well, although this is scaled, so it doesn't scale too high. Uh, the tank receives similar treatment together with separate sound for its tracks. So this example is interesting because the car, before we play the video, the car heads off, it goes over an ore patch, then it hits stone, which stone path has a movement bonus for you and for vehicles. Then concrete. Basically everything. Yeah, everything except biters. Biters don't get a and movement trains. bonus. And trains, true. Um, so yes, then concrete, which gives it a bigger movement bonus. And then the tank comes back along the same path. And yeah, I don't know so much about the idling sound. Like it just disappears. Um, but... And I don't... What did you say earlier about the idling sound? Um, it just sort of... Or the, the running sound just sort of goes, but it never really... It seems... The, or the idling seems to linger for a bit too long, and then it doesn't really ramp up. Yeah. Um, the, the crossover... The concrete. The crossover might be... Need to be a little bit shorter, I guess. So the car sounds like it's going at full speed earlier and the idling disappears earlier. Uh, let's play the clip. Yeah.
So yeah, there's a lot more detail, especially for the car. The car, you can hear it driving yeah. across the ore. You can hear, I think there's a subtle sound for when you're driving on concrete, or sorry, on bricks rather than concrete. Yeah, there seems to be a different rolling noise. Yeah, yeah. And the tank, I think a lot of it's lost due to the track. The separate track for the tracks for the tank. God, that was hard to say. Um, yes, yes. Um, I think maybe the tracks need to be a little bit quieter for the track, for the tank tracks. Yes. Uh, and overall, it's an improvement. Don't get me wrong. I, I, I like the fact, I especially love the fact that we can hear you driving over all. That, I think, is going to add to the game. I'm also now wondering if there's going to be different sound for sand. Assuming we're getting there's sand. An interesting one. I also like... The, like yep. Hmm. I'm just trying to think if the game actually distinguishes between sand or not. I don't know if it does. Well, mods have a penalty for running across sand. Oh, Factorio yeah. Yeah, movement penalty. Did so at one stage? Drive it. Well, Factorio did at one stage for walking across sand. I don't know if it still exists, because I know a lot of people complain about it. So it might have oh, been removed. Too, yeah. yeah. So, um, I mean, it may, the, the underlying logic may still be there. Oh, well, uh, the, the, it's a different terrain set. So, yes, you could have a different sound for driving across sand without a problem. Um, as long as you've got crossfade between grass, sand, grass, sand, because there are going to be those patches which are grass, sand, grass, sand, grass, sand, as you're driving across the edge of a biome. Um, but yeah, it, it is an improvement. It's a big improvement. I, I love the fact that Factory is coming back to audio because I think audio is such a big, important part of games. Um, it is. So I like the fact that they're coming back to this, but I think the best thing when it comes to audio is don't have the professional do the testing and have, you know, this is what I've come up with. This is the perfect blah, 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 because they actually have good, proper hearing. Take somebody who doesn't care and has crap hearing and then give it to them. If they're impressed, then everybody else is a lot more impressed because they won't hear a lot of the subtleties that a professional audio engineer will. Um, but then we have trains. And trains is, um, of course. Gotta have trains. Gotta have trains. Gotta have trains. Now, trains also have elevated rails now, which is going to add a new sound effect. Um, and I think it sounds exactly like a roller coaster. And I'm, I'm willing to bet because it's easy to get sound files for roller coasters than it is for elevated train tracks. I'm willing to bet it's borrowed from, uh, from, from, from a, um, uh, a roller coaster. But yes, trains. Trains got an update too. There's a lot of people commenting that it sounds like a roller coaster tycoon. Yep. I don't have good hearing, but I'm willing to bet. I think, but I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure there's a different sound effect when it's going through the chicanes. I'm not sure. I, I, this is one of the reasons I'm boosting the volume for these clips in YouTube video. Um, I'm willing to bet there's a little bit of a... There's an extra sound added for the, the going through the chicanes for the train. Uh, definitely on the ground. Maybe not so much on the elevated, but yeah, definitely on the ground tracks. There seems to be. Uh, but yes, they've added additional machine sounds. Did you notice how I did the sound when the car was going over the different tiles and resources? Uh, the sounds of the cargo wagon doors made in the previous video. They don't work well as working sounds, so a different approach was needed. We could add some special logic into each entity's update to handle additional sounds. We've done that for some things in the past. For example, the artillery turret uh, had its rotational sound in the update logic, which was fine unless you did too much, ro uh, too much artillery shooting speed. At which point the sound file broke. Uh, um, but it's fine. <laughs> uh, fine as long as the number of entities with additional sound logic is very small. Becomes inefficient and wasteful when you try to add sounds for entities uh, where there is a lot of, like, mining drills and robots. Yeah, robots don't really have much of a sound anymore. I remember they used to make a sound, but I don't think they do anymore. Bye, Joe. In the year, Canelo, uh, with the deep sounds and, and various bloops that they're making. That mojo's broken. I broke mojo. Um, oh, the thing, thing dropped out. Oh, he's back. He's back. Robots. Oh, sounds. Robots. Yeah, all the beeping and the blooping that they used to make. Yeah. Um, no. used, to be, used to assault your ears with them. 
they don't make that anymore, do they? Uh, still when they're charging. Oh, okay. So they got a charging sound, but no, they, they used to have a sound if they flew over you that obviously got removed. He, he was mimicking the robot sounds. Um, yeah, that was in my impersonation of a robot. Yes, yes. Uh, so mining miners do have a sound, but it's like a background ambient sound. It's not really specific to what process they're up to. But with the bigger miners, they've decided to add a couple of additional sounds. And oh, I tell you, Taurus, that was the other thing. If you have too many of them and they fire too fast, they hit a maximum cap on the number of sounds that can be played at once. So you end up with silent oh, artillery. Um, be warned, your artillery can be so so many of them and so deafening of them that you end up losing all factorial sound for a little while. Um, <laughs> or, or, or you get like half a sound and then it just goes silent. Yeah. Random. You get random half firing sounds and then silence. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yeah, there, there was definitely some issues with the cap on the sound limit. Uh, so they create a new system, additional sounds. A bunch of old and new entities already take advantage of this system. Uh, so they want to look at one of the big mining drill. Last time it was shown, I had placeholder sounds, which was probably from the standard mining drill, I think. But um, these are... I don't know. The sounds for the gears moving to move the whole head. And then they just sounds like general crunching sounds. I don't know if I'm for or against it. Yeah, because there's three of them, can't tell if the thing moving is really making a sound or not. It's kind of hard to distinguish. Yeah, the, 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 the big gears on the sides, moving the whole head, definitely have some large ge gear sounds. Um, large gear, possible squeaking sound, I can't quite tell. Oh, again, this is why I, I want to boost it. Because it's going to be, these are all things that you're going to pay attention to once, and you'll notice once consciously. And then from there on, it just becomes part of the background of the game. And it's, it's like... Background noise. Well, it's, you it's, never notice it again. Yeah, well, that, that, that's half the point, all right? It's like games where people like the Sim City and Anno, where they spend ages decorating a small part of the map, which you spend a lot of time look, looking at all the animations and seeing how things work, but then you never look at a second time because it becomes background. But it adds ambience to the game. It does add, it does add an awful lot to the game. So... Yeah, big mining drills, the sounds they make, you're going to listen once, you're going to be, oh, wow, that sounds really awesome, and then you won't pay direct attention to it again, is probably the best way of putting it. But if you walk into a field of them, you're going to know what they're doing. By the same token, if you walk next to one that has no ore, you'll probably realize very quickly uh, that they don't have any ore because they're not making any sounds. Um so then ambient sounds, we had many ideas for 1.0 that we weren't able to implement in time. One was having a more immersive ambient system. Rather than just one wind sound, I devised the wind system that played at different wind tracks when you were zoomed in. One was quite basic. And then a more interesting one is you zoomed out cross fade between the two. This involves the idea of having a semi-persistent ambience. For example, on Vulcanus, you can hear the sound of distant volcanoes at a low level with pauses of varying lengths. But how about adding more specific ambient sounds based on the player's location? For this, we couldn't use the usual game industry approach of ambient trigger boxes or pre-painted regions because our ma maps are generated, not ha handmade. So we came up with the idea of adding sounds to tiles and entities based on specific conditions. Once we had this taken place, I started adding a bunch of sounds such as gentle water lap to bodies of water and leaf rustles to lead uh, for tr to trees there we go i uh, then leaf and eight yeah yes yes i then realized we could have invisible creatures for example small non-hostile but bir alien birds in the trees that only played if the player is within a certain radius of the tree trees numbering above a specified threshold there is also the random pause between each sound taking this idea further we're able to specify whether they play according to the time of the day or the zoom level of the camera
That one I don't actually think I have to boost. I think that one's all right. I find that it's interesting. Pretty, pretty yeah. It's yeah. the right amount of subtle. Yeah. Uh, the thing that immediately hit my mind was what happens when you pollute the area? Because that's just a nice clean area. Do you kill off all the birds or do the, the dead trees still have birds in them? Well, that... Or does the water change from, you know, the normal rustling to just a more toxic glooping sound? Uh, does yeah, it yeah. Green? D does, does it turn into more of an oil sound? More of a... Mm. Um, I don't know, what does a giant vat of lube up against the shoreline sound like? Because I think that's how water would turn after it goes green. Yeah. Um, but it does have a note here. Next time you're setting a forest on fire, remember it might be somebody's home. Shoff, sure, I'll remember that. I'll use grenades instead. That way I have a good chance of killing the wildlife at the same time. <laughs> Instant kill so they don't burn. So yeah. They don't suffer the burning. Yeah, I yeah. mean, we sort of knew that anyway in the first place because it's like, there's a biter's home in here. We better set it on fire. That's why we're burning it. <laughs> yes. Yes, 100%. That and the trees are in the way. Let's be honest. Yeah. They are the real enemy. Um, but I am wondering, because I'm wondering whether they've they've painted a, a, a specific tree with the option to have this sound if it has enough trees around it, and blah, 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 or whether they've actually made invisible creatures. Because I'm waiting for the bug report of, hi, my base sounds like you know, a menagerie of birds because for some reason some bug got implemented in the game and all of the ones that I had killed, removed, whatever, spawned at zero, zero, which happens to be where my base is. And it sounds nothing but, you know, like a bird aviary um, with frogs and stuff in the background because all the invisible creatures got moved there. Of course they did. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the impression I get is that it seems to be the tiles rather than the trees or something else. Well... Yeah, tiles or an entity. So I think tying it to well, a... We, it's trigger condition depending on entities around the tile is the impression I get. Actually, mm -hmm. yeah, if you had a mod which gave you spawnable trees, you would get birds in the base. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There you go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm wondering if it's a tree. All right. Um... Yeah, yeah they... you get the right con it's it's all about the conditions. So if you get match the conditions just right, yeah, you get birds in your base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh can we idea of adding sounds to tiles and any entities based on specific conditions. So yeah, the right type of tiles in the base that probably haven't been concreted, and the right amount of mm, entities, trees, trees. Yeah. Yeah, next time you do city block, you can have like a nature block and then a non-nature block and see how long the nature block lasts. Um, if the integration has spawned trees, there you go. There you go. Instant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Instant bird, 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 and reptile wildlife in the middle of the base. So, uh, 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 item sounds. When we released one point Kovrex told me it, it was his wish to have a specific inventory sounds in the game. At that time, we only had one sound for moving items, and it was okay. Maybe a little bit boring. And it didn't give you any special feedback. He explained they needed a bit more like the wire connect and disconnect sounds, which are very, very unique. And this helped me to understand what he meant. Through trial and error, I worked out what sounds could be grouped together, i.e. Uh, small and large metallic items, which needed to be unique. Some needed more iteration than others, and it was sometimes hard to try and figure out what the sound should be. After all, what is the sound of a speed module? Mm, electronic. Yeah. Uh, in that particular case, I end up using a synth sound as it needed to be abstract. So me and Mojo have already gone through this, and you don't know how you feel about it, right? Yeah, I'm indifferent. I'm also disappointed they didn't show the sound of a speed module. I am too. I am too. Uh, I'm also uh, unknown. Very, very unknown when it comes to this particular feature. Yeah. Um, like, Let's see how we do. Well, belt, belt sounds like a chunk of fabric, which I yeah. guess sort of works, but I sort of imagine the belt to be more rubber. Like, or, or medley, or you know, kathunk. No, there's there's too much metal in the game already between all the different ingots and the engines and the, the gears and yeah, everything else. Yeah, that's the only thing. Yeah, you, you have to go with rubber. you got to vary it up a little bit. Um, so this is why I'm sort of expecting rubber. Like, I haven't, did we get a sound for an inserter? We did. And that yes. was odd. 
that it was, was the sound. Of, it was the literal sound of an inserter. No, it's more electronic. It's 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 weird. I I don't know how I feel it's about the sound this. of an inserter reaching. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it, it is. If you zoom right the way in, you never hear it because there's too many other things around it, and you hit yes. the sound cap. Yes. I don't know how I feel about this one. Um, I think it might I be too like, much. I, the one thing I do like about this this thing is that they um, there was an obvious disconnect between the sm team smelter and team factory. What do you mean? Oh, you mean the 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 yeah. the, the, the belts? Yeah, the, the copper switches yep. and the iron switch lanes. It, it, it was Great. multiplayer. It was multiplayer. Obviously, it was multiplayer. Or, I don't know, somebody's doing something that requires copper power poles. Power poles, maybe, on the top line? No? Green, green. That's green circuits. That's copper wire, and then green circuits into inserters, into gears, into belt. That's green science at the top, even though it's coming out the bottom. Yeah. It makes perfect sensibles. Yeah, use a long head inserter and leave your iron side and your iron side and your copper side and your copper side. Yeah. Yeah, there was a disconnect between the people that were building the smelters and building the base. Obviously, you can tell when one, st one team stopped and the next team started. It's like roadworks. You can tell when one team stops and mm -hmm. the next team starts. Yeah. Uh, so then they've also added advanced volume control. Uh, it was mentioned with the ambient sounds, we have more control over their volume. When this is done, Ian would start picking would start asking if it could be used for other sounds as well. I didn't see a reason why not, so I took all these parameters and put them together in advanced volume control properties. This let us do some neat things. The attenuation with distance can be changed from the default linear to a more natural sounding exponential curve. There's also the option of logarithmic, cosine or S curve, or no attenuation at all. If you want to do something different, we can change how the sound attenuates with the zoom level in a similar way. It's possible to specify the darkness threshold in order to have certain sounds play only at nighttime. Factorio horror themed uh, map coming soon in 2.0. Somebody's going to release it. Somebody's going to release it. Guaranteed. Um, last thing in the toolbox are the dynamic sound modifiers. This allows to change the the level of the sound for a specific game context, they, these can, they, they can be dynamic volume modifiers that only apply in the menu simulation or when in tips and tricks when driving a vehicle when a train is on elevated rails. So I like this, but it doesn't specify whether these are open to a user. Yeah, or a map maker slash modder. Well, I assume they're open to a modder in some way, shape or form. Oh yeah, that. It's technically implied that but, you have access to it. Yeah, but I, I'm wondering if it's open. I'm wondering if it's available in the normal settings menu, or if it's in the the rest setting menu where you have access to a lot of other behind the scene features that can be accessed technically from the main menu. Um, and if I remember, I'll put a link up in the top right hand corner how to access that menu. Um, but yeah, it's it's because there are definitely some sounds that get under people's skin, like nails on a chalkboard. Um, it's one of the sounds that doesn't worry me in the slightest. I don't care. But other people, it really gets to them. Um, there's one particular sound, I don't remember what it is, that, that gets under my skin, and, and most people just don't care. So I'm wondering if there are options for people to turn those particular sounds off or turn them right the way down. Um, just as a... I guess it would fall under accessibility. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, an accessibility option. Um, but yeah, uh, they also address sound aggregation. So in certain situations, there can be a lot of sounds wanting to be played at the same time. Combat with many biters is a typical scenario. Biters and tyrants attacking uh, create a lot of sound. Uh, if there wasn't a hard limit on the number of sounds you could play at a given time, it could quickly turn to a wall of noise. Sound aggre aggregation is one way to deal with this. When a noise we've been playing many times, uh, instances of that exceeding a certain limit, could be culled or have their volume reduced. Go back to Mojo, uh, talking about the half an artillery sound, and then it just stops dead. Yep. Uh, because that system is already in 1.1, but it can be used for only a handful of sounds in specific scenarios. For 2.0, the system was greatly improved and usable by most sounds, and as more control over which sounds will be adjusted was added. For these changes in the soundscape of those problematic scenarios is now under control. But at the same time, they added sound priority. So related to the problem of having too many sounds is that sometimes there wouldn't be enough resources left 
for more important sounds, for example, GUI effects or certain player actions. The obvious solution is to introduce a priority system for sounds, and that's exactly what they did. To kick things off, many player actions like building were given a higher priority and several biter sounds were deprioritized, which then leads to the thing that Woob excels at being their test suites. So they've added a bunch of tests uh, for the existing features along with for previous features. Um, just tech check that the sound works update to update uh, along with being able to test that the new additions are working as planned not as implemented because that's not obvious all the time as yep yep as planned yep uh and it is um much larger than what they'd originally planned obviously uh having such a test suite provide extremely helpful when redesigning expanding different parts of the audio system very helpful make these pesky bugs won't creep their way back in and this comes us to the most important of this one which is the music so the music we're gonna get a new soundtrack for factorio space age or at the very least an expanded soundtrack mm. yeah i guess i don't know it's a dlc so technically it's gonna be a new soundtrack yeah yeah yeah, and I'm interested because we, we already covered it. Uh, the music was it's done by one guy back in, well, it came out in, what was it? Uh, December? 20, it, it was The soundtrack was released in, or, or the, the current music was added to the game in version 12, which was end of 2015. It was like 28th of December 2015 yeah. or something. Yeah. And Basically then, 2016. Yeah, and then it was put up on Steam in Feb 2016, I want to say. At least that's when it's yeah, that that popping into the internet. Yeah. So, yeah, um, the Factory music hasn't been updated since. And in fact, I can't even find links to the guy who originally did the Factory music. It seems he's disappeared off the interwebs, probably because he's gone and got, you know, a different job doing something else. But we haven't had um, any updates to the soundtrack since 2016. Um, that's a long time. That's an awful long time. You've been listening to the same 20, 20 tracks of the soundtrack? For eight years. Unless you um, turn music off. Turn music off and play something else. But it it, it does mean uh, Mojo. <laughs> Which is what I did like years ago. Oh, you did it like years ago. Okay. Uh, I haven't done that. I haven't done that. Uh, which then begs the question, exactly how many hours have I listened to um, the Factorio soundtrack? In, um, uh, I, I, I've been playing for close to eight years. Yep. Probably a good thing that it's not handled by Spotify, then. Um, that it, would really screw with an algorithm. <laughs> it would be fine, okay? It's only like 12, 13, 14, 15, I, I don't know. I got to 10,000 hours, I stopped counting. Okay, I stopped counting, I started playing the standalone version more often of Factorio. Don't touch the Steam version, because it keeps a record. It's a lot of hours, an awful lot of hours. Um, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, I can pick that soundtrack anywhere. Um, so I'm interested in what they add. Very, very interested in what they add. Um, mm. yeah, a soundtrack listening to eight years later. Um, that's very rare. Um, but I think that's really where we need to end the, this Friday Facts. Yep. I don't think there's anything else to add. I'm interested to see how these sounds work when they're actually implemented and in the game. I'm hoping for a lot because, um, we have our two. We have Ian and Domino. Ian's the one that's been there. For a while, yeah. Ian's been there for a while. For a while, yeah. Yeah, he came in uh, prior to the updated artillery, which then they forgot to add to the game for like 12 months. They did the sound, they announced the Friday facts, they said, here it is, and then forgot to actually implement the audio files in the game for like 12 months. And I just ragged on them for 12 months in Friday facts. <laughs> 12 months, yeah, I remember that. Yep. Yeah. Um, so they added the, he added the artillery sounds, he made a big improvement to the sound engine leading up to the 1.0 release. And then um, we've got Donino, which seems to be less sound, but more programming to give... Also the engineering side. Yeah, the engineering yes, the software side. And software side. Yeah, to give Ian the ability to add more sounds to Factorio um, and do more with the soundscape of Factorio, which I'm excited to see. I I'm really hoping that I can turn around and say, yes, my... Top two games, you know, Satisfactory's right up there for sound design, and Factorio's right beside it, right behind it, um, because there's been a lot of changes, a lot of lot of improvements. Um, but yeah. Get your Arkham City on? I haven't played Arkham City. 
Maybe we have to add that to it. It was free on Epic ages ago. That's how I ended up getting it. I think I've got the free version on Epic that I haven't installed or played. <laughs> Anyway, with that said and done, uh, let's leave this Friday Facts here. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Do hope you've enjoyed, and we'll see you next week for hopefully not quite as late a Friday Facts number 397. What happens with 400? Wow. Um, I have a little party. A little um, party blower goes off on the screen. You know, the little confetti comes down. Oh, okay, cool. All right, well, I'll wait for that. Anyway, that's which, it. Which, me which means it's more work for you. I've committed to you now. Uh, the, I've got to do it. They don't do it? I thought they don't do it. No, you've got to add it in post. Oh, I mean, they do it, but you've got to add it in post so that everyone can actually see it. Okay. Otherwise, right. nobody will be able to see it. All right, that's it. Okay, that's it. We're out. Uh, thanks for watching. See you next one. Bye. Bye-bye.